What are the biggest challenges publishers face accommodating all the various uh, ebook formats? I think producing those various different ebook formats in and of itself is quite a huge challenge. And I think it's not just the multiplicity of formats, but also the multiplicity of devices that accept those different formats. So for example, just generating the Mobi format, which is basically just for Kindle right now. There are many different Kindles. There is a Kindle e-ink device, a Kindle for iOS, a Kindle for BlackBerry, a Kindle for Android, and Kindle Fire. Um, right. And all those have different rendering capabilities. So the Kindle hardware e-ink devices are obviously in black and white, um, but also have much more limited CSS capabilities for design than, say, mm -hmm. the Kindle Fire. Um, so a huge challenge for publishers is being able to uh, you know, you know, nimbly and quickly produce all those different formats, but also maintain the optimal level of compatibility for those different formats. And right. I think that entails oftentimes making a lot of trade-offs and saying, um, you know, this would look best like this on the Apple iPad, but if we do it this way, then that same EPUB file may not look as good on the Sony Reader, which is an e-ink device. Right. So it, it's carefully crafting um, your your CSS and your design capabilities and also doing an awful lot of QA. I feel a huge part of production and publishing in the ebook realm is really QA that didn't exist before in print, where it was just sort of like you created a print-ready file and sent it to the printer and the printer printed the book to, to your specifications. Right. Now you're dealing with specifications for all these different e-readers and that's really challenging. Right. Well, what role does HTML5 play? HTML5 opens a huge number of doors in terms of interactive and multimedia content. So uh, HTML5 is basically the means that most e-readers are using right now to embed audio and video content into uh, e-books. Mm -hmm. So the audio tag in HTML5 for embedding audio and the video tag for embedding video. Um, also what offers a huge amount of promise in HTML5 is the new canvas tag, mm -hmm. uh, which is sort of an, what I call an interactive sketch pad. Uh, for adding multimedia content like animations and because it's interactive you know a user can click on the canvas or draw on the canvas or do different things to modify what appears on the canvas um, so anything that you could do with flash and animations you can now do in ebooks natively in HTML5 with canvas right. so, so there's a huge amount of opportunity there uh, to do all kinds of really exciting interactive multimedia things sort of you know next generation ebooks right mm -hmm. right do you think we'll ever have a universal format? <laughs> that's a great question. I really, I'm really optimistic and I really hope so. I think that's what they're striving for with the EPUB 3 standard, which is based around HTML5 and it's all these open technologies, HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. Um, you know, I'm really hopeful that e-readers will sort of follow suit with what's been happening on the web where you can build an HTML5 website and there's pretty good compatibility across the board and whether you're looking at it in Google Chrome or Safari or Firefox. Um, you know, I'm really, really optimistic that the, you know, EPUB 3 or, you know, the next generation of EPUB 3, I guess maybe EPUB 4, you know, <laughs> will, will sort of be the open standard that reflowable ebooks will coalesce around using open technologies and then that will really be supported by these various e-readers. Right. You know, um, I, I think what's disappointing right now is that, you know, Amazon is very set on their movie format for their Kindle device. Apple has made, made a lot of strides away from EPUB 3 with their latest iBooks 2.0 and iBooks Author, mm -hmm. which sort of is producing multimedia and interactive eBooks, but in their own proprietary format. Um, so I think vendors are interested, you know, that, that, that make these devices are interested in, you know, maintaining that sort of lock-in for customers. That, so that's a challenge that, that, that the industry faces right now, sort of trying to push things back towards open standards, which I think is, is best for everyone. Right, right. And for my last question, if all publishers got rid of DRM, what effect might that have on the formats? I, you know, I think, again, utopian thought would be that, you know, that it would, things could coalesce around a format like uh, EPUB 3, that publishers would say, oh, okay, this is an open standard, an open format, no DRM. You know, I think a lot of the digital rights management is about achieving that sort of lock-in and worried about you know, customers copying files and, and right. doing all kinds of things that publishers don't want them to do. Right. Um, so, you, so you take that away and you know, it could potentially be a huge boon in terms of making the lives of publishers easier in making these formats. My concern again is with vendor lock-in that you know, 
Apple has a you know and Amazon have a very high interest in you know maintaining files that just work on their systems. And, and that's another challenge I think that publishers face that, that sort of dovetails. It's not contiguous with DRM, but right. it, it's sort of the same thing. And you know, it actually effectively achieves sort of the same result that if you make a file that's for the iPad only, you know, it limits what you can do with it. Right, right. All right, well thank you very much. Thank you.